Hey all you theater devotees, welcome to Broadway by Ghostlight. I'm Mark Bonani, and this week I thought we'd discuss the many superstitions in the theater world. I'm not superstitious, but I'm, I am a little stitious. Both well-known and a bit obscure. The theater world has many ethereal rules and superstitions that every actor and director are supposed to follow. These 15! Hey. Ten! Ten commandments! It's not too surprising, as theater is steeped in long-standing traditions. Tradition. Plus, there's no better storytellers than theater people, so if something has to have a reason behind it, why not give it a fun backstory, am I right? Am I right or am I right or am I right? Right. So, without further ado, let's jump into these theater superstitions and find out just how much bad luck we've been bringing upon ourselves all these years. If you don't believe, you better get Break a leg. If you are connected in any way to theater, you probably already know that it's very bad luck to wish someone good luck before a show. And I just want to wish everybody good luck. What? What did you say? Bite your tongue. Good and him well, What's the matter? All I said was good luck. Ah! He said it again. You always are supposed to say break a leg. Why would you say that? But where exactly does that phrase come from? You know, I have no idea. There are actually quite a few different theories on the origin to the phrase from all around the world, many different time periods, but no evidence to really back up any of them as the true source. But what is truth? Not easy to define. We both have truths. Are yours the same as mine? There's one origin that actually dates back all the way to the ancient Greeks, where instead of applauding, they would stomp their feet to show their appreciation for the actors. And uh, I guess if they liked the performance well enough, they would stomp so hard that I, they would break their leg. Break a leg! I broke my leg! Others attribute the phrase to Elizabethan England. Like the days of yore, you know? Where it referred to bowing. Breaking the leg referred to bending the knee, breaking the line of the leg to bow, or often they would throw money onto the stage to show their appreciation and you would bend down or break the leg to pick up the coins. And while those explanations sound totally plausible, totally. there's actually no documented evidence of the phrase being used until the 1920s. Yes, I'm certain that I read that somewhere once. So the most prevalent theory comes from vaudeville. Vaudeville, huh? I worked vaudeville once. That is a tough audience. Where the leg being broken actually refers to the curtains in the theater on the sides of the theater or the wings. Uh, in vaudeville, an actor would only get paid if they actually appeared on stage. So to break the leg would mean to come on stage and thus get paid. No whistling. Whistling backstage has long been considered very bad luck. No, don't whistle. No whistling. It's not the Andy Griffith show. No whistling. And this stems from the days back before there were computerized sets and lighting and all that jazz. Back in the day, all the rigging for the sets and the lighting and whatnot were all operated by hand using ropes. As such, the backstage crews were often filled with out-of-work sailors because they literally knew the ropes. And just like on ships at that time, signals and commands were given with distinct whistles. So if someone was whistling backstage during a show, someone up in the flies might misinterpret that, release the set piece too early, and it could ruin the whole show, or worse. Boom! Crunch! Banned items. There are several items that are verboten in the theater. So they're forbidden. Some of the items being contraband are attributed to old world superstitions like the peacock feather, which aren't supposed to be used on stage because they resemble the evil eye. Evil? While some of the items being banned are just from plain old practicality. Practical cats! Mirrors are supposed to never be used on stage because they're bad luck, but in reality it's just because the lighting can be reflected off the mirrors and into the audience. Blinded by the light! Though I guess nobody told a chorus line or Phantom of the Opera. You're also never supposed to use real money or real jewelry on stage. Sir, this is just Monopoly money. But that just comes from people not wanting to get valuable stolen. Green costumes were also once very unlucky for the stage, and that stems from the first spotlights. 
Spotlight, please. The first spotlights uh, worked by burning a chemical called quicklime, which gave it its nickname, the limelight. But true to its name, the light from these limelights had a green tint to it. So if you were wearing a green costume, it might not show up as well. There's certain shades of limelight that can wreck a girl's complexion. And still other banned items just stem from good old fashioned greed. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Blue costumes also used to be very bad luck. <laughs> I'm afraid I just blew myself. And that's because blue dye was the most expensive dye at the time. So producers quickly spread the rumor that blue costumes were, were really bad luck so that they didn't have to pony up the dough for the dye. What is this shit? This is blue. Though if they really wanted to seem fancy and bring good luck to their show, they could have blue costumes, but it had to have silver lining. The Scottish play. Shakespeare's Macbeth is probably the most popular play ever written. Macbeth? McWho? It also happens to be one of the most cursed. So much so that you actually aren't allowed to say the name of the play in any theater. Ever say that out loud again. It's considered extremely bad luck. Bad luck, I'm afraid. Most theater people will only refer to it as the Scottish play or the Bard's play. And theater people take this one very seriously. During one of the last revivals of the play, there was actually big signs plastered on the front of the theater, begging the audience to not say the name of the show they were seeing while inside the theater. Some believe the curse originates back to Shakespeare himself. Oh God, I hate Shakespeare. Oh, that's right, I said it. It's said that the three witches, the spell, double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn at cauldron bubble, eye of needle, tongue of shoe, hand of clock that points at two. This is the real thing, in it? Right out of Shakespeare. Is actually a real incantation. And a coven of witches cursed the play for all eternity as retaliation for stealing one of their spells. And while this all could seem silly or highly improbable in today's modern world, what are you giving us all this mumbo jumbo for? I don't believe it. It's hard to deny that Macbeth has seen more than its fair share of tragedies. It's believed the first occurrence of the curse happened during the original production of Macbeth. The young man playing Lady Macbeth, because of course in Shakespeare time, by law, there was no women allowed on stage. There's no women there. Uh, so the young man playing Lady Macbeth died before the opening night performance and Shakespeare himself actually had to jump in at the last minute to replace him. There have been numerous documented cases of people getting accidentally stabbed during the fight scenes of the play. In 1934, four actors in the same production had to be hospitalized for either sickness or injury. That's why I could never be an actor. It's also the show that was being performed by dueling productions that caused the great Astor Place riots of 1849 that left 25 dead and over 100 injured. Stop saying it! Saying what? Macbeth! Ah, now I've said it. Three candles. Usually the rule of three is that things in three are good luck. Is this a rule of three thing? Not so much in the theater when it comes to candles. Decorative candles! Having three lit candles on stage is said to be very unlucky. And in fact, the person standing next to the smallest candle is said to be the next person to either get married or die. I say same difference. Am I right? <sighs> My wife's gonna kill me. And while the origin is not super clear on this one, it just stems back from the time when so many theaters were burning down and they just wanted to have less candles on stage. graveyard flowers. It's actually considered very bad luck to give someone flowers before a show. Since when? But what about after? It's said that for flowers given after a show to truly be good luck, they're supposed to be stolen from a gravesite. All right, that's, that's creepy. And while this sounds super creepy, it originates from when actors were just broke. I don't have any money. And instead of buying flowers, they would just swipe it from the local graveyard. That's why you don't trust actors. And those are some of the most prevalent theater superstitions that all actors and directors are required by Thespis himself to abide by. Everything is very dramatic. How many have you heard of before? 
What superstitions do you have that I missed? Let me know down in the comments, I'd really love to hear. I'm a superstitious man. Also, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It would mean so much to me if you would subscribe. I almost forgot one last superstition. Oh no, what now? It is considered the most bad luck to not share this video with the theater person in your life. Really? No, dumbass. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Broadway by Ghostlight. I'm Mark Benani. I'll see y'all next time.